This video is about the prediction of vapor liquid equilibrium by constructing the XY diagram. We can predict the vapor liquid equilibrium using two methods. The first is the partial pressure method, which combines Routes, Henry's, and Dalton's laws. And the second method is in which we use the alpha constant or the relative volatility method. This method uses key values for components A and B, assuming that the system is binary. Now let's revisit Henry's law. Now the partial pressure, or P1, of a component present in low concentration, now this is key, is directly proportional to its mole fraction x1 in the solvent, and this looks similar to Raoult's law. But H here is the Henry's law constant, which is the constant for that particular component. If we compare this to Raoult's law, then we can see obvious similarities, where this equation, Raoult's law, looks almost the same as this equation except for H and P1 not here. Thus, if we combine these two equations, we can infer that H, or Henry's law constant, is equal to the partial pressure of component 1 if it's pure, but this only but this is only true at certain conditions. Now, what is the difference between Henry's law and Raoult's law, since they look so similar? Let's rewrite the equation for Henry's law. P1 equals to H x1, and for Raoult's law, P1 equals to P1 naught x1. The difference between these two equations are the changes in behavior at low and high concentrations. Now if we rearrange this equation to become x1 equals to h and we apply a limit to illustrate the change in concentration say x1 goes towards 0, it means very low concentration, we see that it approaches the Henry's law constant. So if you look at this diagram, at very low concentrations, we see that this line would approach h. It doesn't reach h, but approaches it. Now for Raoult's law, just like for Henry's law, we rearrange it to become and we apply a limit at high concentration becomes 1, we see that it would approach the partial pressure of component 1 if it is pure. And here we see that as it goes towards the high concentration range, then it approaches the partial, the pure, the partial pressure of pure component 1. Now how do we calculate xA and yA for component A using Raoult's law and Dalton's law. Now Raoult's law again is this equation, while Dalton's law is this. Quite simply it means that the partial pressure of A is equal to the mole fraction of A in the gas phase multiplied by the total pressure. If it's a binary system, the mole fraction of A plus the mole fraction of B would equal to 1 in the liquid phase. And in the gas phase, the mole fraction of A plus the mole fraction of B would also equal to 1. And this is the same as partial pressure of A plus the partial pressure of B is equals to the total pressure. And that YA is equals to PA over PT. And also YB is equals to PB over PT. Thus, XA and YA can be calculated using the equations below. We can derive this equation from the combination of Raoult's law, Dalton's law, and these two mole balance equations. The second method to calculate xA and yA is the relative volatility method which uses the alpha constant. K value is the distribution coefficient which is also known as the vaporization equilibrium constant and it relates the mole fraction in liquid form with the mole fraction in the gas 
the relative volatility or alpha between A and B of component A to component B can be defined as this equation alpha AB is equals to this constant Ka divided by Kb which is the same as ym over xa times yb over xb. We can write this for a two component system where ya is equals to ka xa and yb is equals to kb xb. Rearranging this equation we'll get ka equals to ya over xa and kb equals to yb over xb and following this definition alpha ab is equals to ka divided by kb means ka divided by kb and uh, plugging these values into this equation you'll get this relationship and combining these two equations uh, and combining this equation with the mole balances of xa plus xb equals to 1 and also ya plus yb equals to 1 and we, if we rearrange this to become this and rearrange this to become this and combine this with this and you will come up with this equation that gives you the relationship between the mole fraction of a in the liquid phase and the mole fraction of a in the gas phase just by knowing the alpha constant, this is a constant value, and plugging it into this equation, then we will have an equation that relates xa and ya. Now if you want to do it for ya, which is also similar to this, and we just need to plug in again the same constant into, the, into this equation to get the relationship between ya and xa. But these two equations are the same, and in the end you'll be able to come up with the diagram that relates x and y by using either one of these equations that shows the equilibrium curve of this two component system. Also note that this constant may vary with temperature but uh, from experience we know that for most systems or most, most multi-component systems its value is constant.